Hello everyone, welcome to our video about bone remodeling. Let's get started. Bone remodeling is a process by which mature bone tissue is removed or resorbed and replaced by new bone tissue. This usually happens following injuries or fractures and also happens after micro damage that happens following normal activities. Always with normal activities, there is micro damage to the bone. This micro damage is fixed by bone remodeling. So this bone remodeling happens continuously at a slow rate. Any imbalance between bone formation and bone resorption will result in diseases. For example, in osteoporosis, there is excessive bone resorption and not enough bone formation. So this will result in bone weakening. Bone remodeling is important obviously for bone repair after fractures or micro damage and also is important for calcium homeostasis. Bone remodeling makes sure serum calcium stays within normal limits. This bone remodeling is, mid, is modulated, not mediated, modulated by osteoblasts. It's mediated by osteoblasts and osteoclasts, but it's modulated or regulated only with osteoblasts. This is an overview of this process. So osteoblasts secrete a number of substances that either stimulates or inhibits the function of the osteoclasts. The two major substances that stimulates the function of the osteoclasts are monocyte colony stimulating factor and rank ligand. When the osteoclasts are activated, they start secreting acids and lysosomal enzymes. The acids will hydrolyze the hydroxyapatite, which is the mineral component of the osteoid, and the lysosomal enzymes will break down the collagen. Rank ligand when binds to the rank, which stands for receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B, will result in the production of nuclear factor kappa B, which is a substance or second messenger within the nucleus of these osteoclasts. This will result eventually in the activation of the osteoclasts, and the activation of osteoclasts will result in the breakdown of bone. This process will be regulated or inhibited by another substance that's coming from also the osteoblasts, which is called osteoprotegrin. This osteoprotegrin acts as a decoy factor for the rank ligand. And the meaning of a decoy factor is, it's a substance that binds to the ligand, inhibits the function of the ligand, and by itself, it doesn't have another function. So this decoy factor for example, does not bind to a receptor and elicit an action. Its only function is to bind to a ligand and inhibits its function. So osteoprotegrin is a decoy factor for the rank ligand. When it binds to the rank ligand, it prevents the binding of the rank ligand to the rank. So in turn, this will result in the inhibition of the function of the osteoclasts. This osteoprotegrin is upregulated by estrogen. So estrogen makes sure there is enough quantity of osteoprotegrin to prevent the breakdown of bone. And that's why in, in postmenopausal women, when there is less amount of estrogen, the amount of osteoprotegrin is also going to be less. And this will result in excessive bone resorption compared to the new bone formation, and this will result in the bone weakening or the osteoporosis experienced by postmenopausal women. There is a medication called denosumab, which is a monoclonal antibody against the rank ligand. So it inhibits the function of the rank ligand. So it blocks the activation of the osteoclasts and blocks bone resorption. This denosumab can be used in osteoporosis and can also be used in diseases that results in excessive bone destruction as in bone tumors and other disease processes that causes bone destruction. Let's make an example. Let's say this is a bone, and this is part of the bone that's been destroyed, or an old bone that needs to be removed. Now the osteoblasts will secrete monocyte colony stimulating factor, a rank ligand, that will act on the osteoclasts and say to the osteoclasts, oh, please come here and destroy this area. So the osteoclasts will destroy this area and make it clear. But we don't want the osteoclasts to keep breaking down more bone. So now the osteoblasts will secrete osteoprotegrin to tell the osteoblasts, please stop at this point. Now this area of the bone is clear and empty, so we need to lay down new bone now. Now the osteoblasts will now start to lay down 
new bone and make new bone in this area. And when the osteoblasts keep secreting matrix and osteoid, they become trapped. So this is an osteoblast, for example. It keeps secreting osteoid and it becomes trapped within this osteoid and now it becomes what's called osteocytes. This process keep repeating itself with injuries and fractures. Hormones plays a major role in the regulation of the rate of bone remodeling. So as we said, osteoblasts increase bone mass by increasing the production of osteoid and inhibiting the osteoclasts. Increasing bone mass is stimulated by hormones like estrogen, androgen, thyroid hormone, and growth hormones. So these hormones increase the bone mass by increasing the production of osteoid by osteoblasts. Bone resorption, on the other hand, is stimulated by parathyroid hormone and also by vitamin D. That's mainly a response to low calcium in the blood. And this is indirectly through the stimulation of osteoblasts that will work on the osteoclasts. So the osteoclast does not have receptor for parathyroid hormone or vitamin D. The receptors for these hormones are located within the osteoblasts. And when stimulated, now the osteoblasts will work on the osteoclasts to break down bone. Osteoclast bone resorption is inhibited by a hormone called calcitonin and also, as we discussed, by osteoprotagrin. Overproduction of rank ligand occurs in degenerative bone diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis, and this will result in excessive bone resorption. This is the end of the video. As usual, thank you all for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like the video, and also check out our Facebook page Medical Borditis for more interactive material. And see you next time.